Luke chapter 1, and uh, we'll begin to minister there this morning. Amen. Luke chapter 1. And we started over the last two weeks about a series of messages entitled Think Big. Somebody say think. Think big. big. In verse 37, the angel speaking to Mary says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Can somebody say that? For with God nothing shall be impossible. Well, let's just say it one more time. For with God, nothing Nothing. shall be impossible. impossible. Can we say it one more time? For with God, God, nothing nothing shall be impossible. impossible. One more time for all the believers. For with God, God, nothing nothing shall be impossible. impossible. We could actually say then, for without God, everything will be impossible. How many of y'all want an impossible life? No, 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 you want a possible life. I said, how many want a impossible? No, 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 we don't want an impossible life. We want a life full of possibilities. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all want a life full of possibilities? So it would, it would matter most then to me that I don't try to live this life without him, but I live this life with him. Because with God, all things are possible. In other words, without him, everything in life will become impossible. Roadblocks, hindrances, difficulties, things that arise up, they'll defeat me. They'll have an opportunity to take me out. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. You know, the angel Gabriel was speaking this to Mary and said, Mary, I need to help you elevate your thinking because with God, nothing will be impossible. The angel came along to Mary and said, Mary, you're going to be with child. His name is going to be Jesus, the son of the living God. He's going to be Christ, the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. The word Emmanuel means God with us, not without God, but God with us. So the angel was saying, Mary, though you are are not married and you do not have a husband, but God is going to come on you and you are going to become pregnant and with child because you've been favored of Almighty God. I talked about this a little bit last week that Mary's thinking began to wrestle with because her mind could not comprehend what the angel was telling her. You know, sometimes in our life, our thinking, our stinking thinking could get in our way and interrupt the very plan that God has for us. Because God's plan for you and God's plan for me is not going to be something that we can conceive with our own intellect and our own thinking that, oh, yeah, that's possible. Oh, anybody can do that. Oh, that's the simplest thing. Oh, there's a hundred people can do what I'm going to be doing. No, God wants to take you, and that's where the miracle comes into place because God wants to do something in you and through you that nobody has ever seen before. Nothing has ever been done before. In other words, God wants to make you the miracle through the favor of his son in your life. That in other words, your family and your friends and those close to you, they begin to look at you and see the miraculous power of God, of his super in your natural, making everything in your life become supernatural. In other words, you might be raised up to be that doctor, that school teacher, that truck driver, that parent, that foster parent, the ones that other people in their own thinking is, oh, I could never do that. I don't know how that could be done. It just hurts my head to think about that. You know, I've talked to people before and they said, you know, it just my head hurts to begin to think about that. Why? Because their mind could not comprehend something miraculous that God was wanting to do. In other words, all they saw the obstacles and all God sees is the odds. He sees the odds that are for you, the odds that are in your favor, not the odds that are stacked against you. Don't shout me down as I preach it so good in the month of December. This is miracle month. Come on, this is the month of miracles. This is is the month we celebrate a, a baby being born 
by a virgin, only something that God could do, only a miraculous intervention, a miraculous provision. And who did he do it for? For you and for me. You know, the angel Gabriel came along to Mary and said, hey, Mary, you have been favored among all women. I said last Sunday that if God favored Mary, he had you in mind. When God was favoring Mary, he was actually favoring you and your children and your children's children because God holds covenant to a thousand generations. In other words, when God wasn't just telling Mary, Mary, you're favored and I'm not favored. No, God was saying, Mary, you have found favor with God, meaning everything beyond you, everything behind you, everything by the result of you and your decision and your thinking today, favor will come on the world like it's never seen. That means now when you and I accept the Christ, Emmanuel, peace, with God, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then not only was Mary favored, now we start experiencing that same favor. And as we begin to live our life full of God, full of his presence, full of his goodness, full of his peace, full of his hope, now people that come in contact with us start finding favor on their life. You know, favor's worth a lifetime of labor. One moment of favor with God is worth a lifetime of labor. Amen. I want to declare to you in this season, in this holiday season, to elevate your thinking, elevate your expectation, dream big, think big. Don't wait to New Year's Eve to start thinking big. You, over the next few days, over these next few weeks, begin to think big, begin to elevate your thinking because, listen, it matters how we finish a race as much as it does how we begin a race. If I finish strong, I will begin strong. If I finish weak, I will begin weak. God wants you not to begin 2018 weak. He wants you to begin strong. And this is the time right now, make a decision. You know what? I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm going to finish strong this year. I'm not finishing weak. I'm not finishing sad. I'm not finishing lonely. I'm not finished thinking less. I'm finishing thinking big. It is always a result. My morning is a result of how I went to bed the night before. If I go to bed with a lot on my mind the night before, I'm normally going to wake up with a lot on my mind. If I go to bed depressed, I'm going to wake up depressed. Don't let the ending of this year establish how your beginning is going to be. Some people have the mentality, oh, I'm going to wait till New Year's Day. I'm going to wait till January. Everything's going to change. No, friends, start right now today. Make a decision. I'm not letting this thing go another day, another second. I'm not letting it get a hold of me. I'm not entertaining this. I'm going to begin to think beyond my means, beyond my circumstance, beyond my feelings. It's amazing how the angel was trying to elevate Mary's thinking. Number one, he said, you have found favor with God. In other words, when God was telling Mary by the angel Gabriel, she is going to become pregnant with Jesus and he's going to be the savior of the world, then God was thinking about you and God was thinking about me. So when God was telling Mary, Mary, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. If God had Mary on his mind and God had me on his mind, then the same word holds to this day and this hour. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Why dream less that if with God, nothing shall be impossible. Why dream small if with God, nothing shall be impossible? Why think small? Why think less for with God, nothing shall be impossible? Amen. Amen. See, faith comes by hearing and not having heard. The only way faith gets established in me is by a repetitious cycle of hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, not having heard. Sometimes people brush off the miracle power of God or the supernatural intervention of God because they've heard it before. 
This thing went off in my spirit the other day while I was thinking about it. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You know, I was thinking about 2018 and thinking about some things that we're planning to do and some things I'm going to release on our New Year's Eve service of some great things, some first ever things that we've never, ever done before. We're going to do almost like two years ago when we stepped out to do the feed the 5,000 and it was only set to feed 5,000, but we fed 6,746. I had no idea what God was going to do with that, but yet I wasn't going to think small and have feed the 300. I was like, no, 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 we're going to have feed the 5,000. People came to me and said, 5,000, how are we going to feed 5,000? I had preacher friends call me on the phone and said, that's a big dream. That's a big plan, Chad. What if you only feed 200? I said, well, it don't cost me nothing to dream big and to think big and to enlarge my borders. It don't cost me nothing if I only feed 200. I'd rather be on the road to where I believe I want to go than sitting at a stop sign deciding which way to go. No, no, I'd rather be headed a direction than trying to figure out what I'm going to do. You know, years ago when we started Destiny, I wanted a pastor in Florida. I was in a drug rehab in Florida, twice there, back and forth. You know, I just felt something's in Florida for me because God kept sending me back to Florida to get free. And I wanted a pastor there in Florida. And I just knew Florida, Ocala, Florida, is exactly where I knew that was where I was going to be. As close to the beach as possible. Everybody sees these palm trees out there. Once I found out, God told me to start here in Colleen. I said, we're going to bring Florida to Colleen. <laughs> At least when I pull up, I think I'm in Florida. <laughs> Come on, you can change your atmosphere and your situations, you not may be where you thought you were going to go and you might be where God wants you to be, but you can decorate it and make it look just like it's the place you wanted to be. And somebody said, are you sure you're supposed to be in Killeen? Jesus wasn't even received in his own hometown. See, because this is my hometown, born and raised in Killeen. I was just born a couple street, uh, couple blocks from here on Hillendale Hospital, just right down the street here by cross street from an old Dairy Queen that used to be there. I mean, I was just born not just blocks from here. People come to me and say, Jesus wasn't even received in his own hometown. What makes you think you're going to be received? Well, I said, well, if you read a little bit further, the Bible says they didn't know who Jesus was. It's not so much that people don't know who I am, but yeah, they may know me by my old nature, but once God comes inside you like he did in Mary and a birth and a new vision and a new dream comes to pass, then you become the favorite of Almighty God. And when you receive Jesus like Mary did, then you become the favorite of Almighty God. And once God's favor's on you, then nothing shall be impossible. Long as you're working with God. I found out my greatest part in your life is working with God. Never work against God. Never work without God. Never work in front of God. You need to work with him or just a tad behind him. Okay, Lord, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. But see, I begin to think, there's no way that feeding of 5,000, how in the world could that happen? And then the very second year, it went feed the 5,000. Somebody said, you might need to change it to feed the 10,000 because we fed 11,677 uh, people. Don't get too excited. It's only a miracle. Amen. But what if we'd have never thought feed the 5,000? See, it wasn't my dream. It wasn't my thought. It was where Jesus fed the 5,000. So I took something in the scripture that Jesus did. And the Bible, Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I'll make you a disciple. Follow me. It's, it's somebody that's going to decide I'm not doing it my way. I'm going to do it the miraculous way. And the miraculous way is doing with God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I know you may be looking at your finances. 
You may be looking at your marriage. You may be looking at your health care. You may be looking at all kinds of different things. And recently you're like, how in the world is this going to happen? Maybe you're looking at your finances for Christmas or whatever's going on. Friend, let me encourage you today. I'm not an angel of the Lord. I wish my wife would think I was. I'd get a lot more respect at the house. The angel of the Lord has walked in. <laughs> but the, an angel, by definition, means a messenger from God. I will allow myself to step in for a moment to be a messenger of God, a representative of God's word to declare to you today that you enter this time and this season for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I want my family to get along this holiday season. I want this. I'm believing for that. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. If I'm working with God, how should this road be? Should I communicate? If I'm going to work with my wife in our marriage and how we're going to raise our kids, should I work without her and just start telling the kids everything I want to do? Or should I obviously maybe meet with her and us get a plan how we're going to raise our children? Amen. Right? In other words, if I'm going to work with God, for with him nothing shall be impossible, then maybe I should consult God. Maybe I should talk to him. Maybe I should spend a little time getting to understanding his view, his thought pattern, his heart. Because it, when I begin to put God's thoughts in my thoughts, when I begin to have God's heart and not my heart, because his ways and his thoughts are much broader and wider than mine. His heart is much bigger than mine. Amen. Maybe the, bear, the burden and the labor that I'm going through, maybe the lifting of that and the removing of that is when I quit thinking the way I can think and what I can understand and I start embracing God's thoughts. Amen. Would you go with me to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And would you look with me down in verse 28? It says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Uh, do you love God? Obviously you do. You're in church today. But could you just raise your hands and wave? I love God. Right? I love God. I love God. What about you? I love God. What about you? Come on, someone turn to your neighbor and say, I love God. I love God. What, about you? what about you? No, we all love God. We're God lovers. We're not God robbers. We're God lovers. Amen. Come on, somebody say that I'm a, I, I'm a, God, I'm a God lover, I'm a God lover. Not, a God not a God robber. No, no, we love God. And the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God. And goes on to says, and are called according to his purpose. Now I'm telling you, years ago I could not understand how is all things work together for my good. Because I faced obstacles and difficulties and disappointments. But yet somehow when I worked with God, he made everything turn around and work for my good than working for my bad. In other words, if something supernatural happens when you work with him, then working against him or resisting him, but you begin to say, you know what, God, if you said it can happen, then I agree with it. If you said it's possible, then I agree with you. I'm not going to agree with me. I'm not going to agree with others. I'm I'm going to agree with you. Amen. 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 So, you know, when, when, we, when we started here uh, the year 2000, January, the first Sunday of January, the 7th is going to be our 18-year anniversary. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and this coming uh, December 15th, I think it's next Thursday or Friday? Friday? Next Friday, my wife and I will be married 27 years. Now, that is a miracle. 
But you know, the first couple years, even though we've been in full-time ministry, the day we got married. So we got married in Bible school, graduated Bible school, went immediately in full-time ministry. Our entire marriage, we've been serving and working full-time for the Lord in some type of ministry of helping people. So for 27 years, this is all we've ever known. We never ever could in our wildest imaginations think we would be where we are today, but we learned something years ago that it's better working with him than working without him. It's work better working along beside him than being too far in front of him. See, years ago when we started to build we came, we said we're going to establish the church here. Many, many arguments and thought patterns of that we shouldn't do it and we should do it and where we're going to do it and all those things. And, you know, I believed in our heart, my wife and I, that Colleen is where we're supposed to be. And her mother called us. She lived in Tulsa and she said, if you don't do it, God said to tell you he's going to find somebody else. You know, I made a decision Back then, over 18 years ago, my wife and I, that, you know what? God's not going to have to look for another person. Once he's found me and all things are going to work together for my good and with God, nothing shall be impossible. We made a decision. God, if this is what you want us to do, then we're going to step out and do it because it's almost like the angel Gabriel began to give a message to Mary and say, Mary, you don't know anyone's ever done this. This may not have been done or seen in the eyes of man before, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. See, God wants to take you and be the barrier breaker. He wants to take you and be the sound breaker. They never understood the speed of sound until it was broken. Maybe you're the one that God wants to be the miracle in so he can work a miracle through. Because until the miracle can get in you, it cannot come through you. That's a little hand clap there. That would be a good spot. See, God is the miracle worker. But, you know, I didn't know what part of town where in Killeen would be. And so we felt, you know what, we're going to do it here. And somebody says, are you sure that's where it's supposed to be? And I said, listen, I'd rather be found when Jesus returns digging in a hole with a shovel, believing this could be the spot, than Jesus returning, and I've spent 18 years with a shovel in my hand, Resting on the ground going, should I dig there? Should I dig there? I'd rather be found trying and had put forth effort of thinking this could be the spot where the miracle is going to happen than waiting for some mystitious or thing to take place to get me to step out in faith to obey God. It boggles our mind to think back 18 years ago how we started in the um, um, Seventh-day Adventist Church down the street here. If you just go down the street a little bit, about a mile down the road on, on Rancier, you'll, you'll pass by the Seventh. That's where we started over 18 years ago in somebody else's church. They believe in having church on Saturday. We said, well, we believe in having church on Sunday. We were able to share the same building. But God took the effort, even though we wasn't even in our own home. You know, Jesus wasn't born in his own home. He was born in somebody else's barn. In other words, you don't ever despise the days of small beginnings. Because in Job chapter 8, verse 7, it says, Though your beginning may be small, your ending is going to be great. In other words, never, never allow the way things are right now. It may not look like much right now, but God's got big plans. God's got big dreams. And your ending will be much greater than your beginning. Why is that going to happen? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Anybody believing for family, relative situations to be reversed and work out for the good? You know, that's not too big for God. 
God could touch that individual. God could touch that child. God could touch that individual, that person, that situation. Because the Bible says he holds the heart of a king in his hand and he will turn it in the favor of the direction in which he pleases. See, nothing is ever impossible as long as I work with God. Marla and I had to learn over 27 years ago that we're not doing this without him. We're going to do this with, it, with him. In other words, we had to make a decision that we lose the right to vote. We didn't vote on should we or shouldn't we. We began to let God, through prayer, give us the resolve that this is what we're supposed to do. This is where we're supposed to be. And once we got the direction for him, from him, then it didn't matter what anybody else said. We were going to work with God. We were not going to work without God. We were not going to work with other people unless they were going to work with God. We wanted to be surrounded with people that are willing to work with God. Because, friend, only with God... Does it become possible? I love how this scripture says, he says, and we know that all things work together, verse 27, for the good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. You know, some of the greatest Obstacles I faced in life growing up, being raised in church, even in the, our marriage, even in being in the ministry for 27 years, full time in the ministry. Some of the greatest obstacles that ever I faced was when I started finding and trying to seek my purpose instead of his purpose. You know, there was many times in my life that things become stagnant and slow and I become depressed and things begin to go the wrong way. And every time I found out I was too caught up trying to find out my purpose instead of recognizing that I'm called according to his purpose. And what makes it always work together for my good is not that I just, I love God, but I realize I'm called according to his purpose. Don't you agree with me today that Mary had to forget about her purpose in life and she had to start finding God's purpose in her life because God had a purpose for Mary, for him to send an angel, Gabriel, to Mary and said, Mary, you're going to be with child. You're going to become pregnant and you're going to have the son of the living God. See, for the purpose of God to be revealed, there has to be a yes from an individual that says, I'm going to do this with him. I'm going to do my marriage with him. I'm going to do my money with him. I'm going to do life with God. I'm going to... I'm going to raise my children with God. Everything about me is not going to be about my purpose. Well, I don't feel like doing that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do I don't want to forgive. I ain't forgiving. They're going to do it again. See, that's all my purpose. Well, I just don't see how that's going to turn around. That's my purpose. Well, I don't see how God's going to be able to do that for me. That's you thinking about your purpose. But all things aren't committed to work together for the good just because I love God. It's to those that recognize, you know what? This life I live, it's not about me. It's about him. What, and the reason I'm thinking big, it's not about me. It's about him. I, I'm going to believe to witness. What if this year you made a decision that one person a month, you was going to get them saved? 2018, Jesus said, you know, one a month, one a month. One. I got 30 days to get one. Some people are like, well, I ain't got one all year. <laughs> but think about it. Don't do it without God. Because with him, all things are possible. Because you're not doing it without God. Because to work with God, to believe for one person a month that I witnessed to, that I share the light with, that could possibly I could lead the sinner's prayer to, if I just believe for one person a month, if I'm going to work with God, how would that look like? Then all month long, January 1st, all month long, God, you bring them across my path, I'll tell them. 
You bring them across my path, I'll witness to them. You put me in the right place at the right time, and you let me know this is the person, God, I'm going to share my story. I'm going to share what you've done in my life. And friend, let me tell you something. You will have every second and every day, God will have them lined up, bring them across your path, and you'll be trying to wrestle which one you're going to talk to. Versus when you try to do it without God and you try to find that person, then you'll be looking at the outward of a person instead of the inward of a person. You won't even recognize the one that's ready because we could get guilty of looking on the outside of an individual and we think they need Jesus and they may already have him. See, that's when I begin to work without God. Because now I'm going, oh, I know that. Look at them. They got to need Jesus. And they could be the most saved individual you've ever met in your life. Because every time I approach something without God, my own intellect, my own way of thinking begins to interrupt his plan, interrupt his purpose. Are you receiving anything out of this today? I don't care what's happened up to this point. Erase it. And now make a decision. You know what? I'm doing everything I do from this day forward. It's going to be with God. And I'm going to be more focused on his purpose in my life than it is my purpose in life. Because I'm called according to his purpose. I've been created according to his purpose. He gave Jesus according to his purpose. And once I get my mind right, I get my heart right, and I stay focused, and my mindset is for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Then I'm going to begin to put God first in my life. I'm going to trust God in my situation. It doesn't matter what someone else may say. It looks hard, looks easy. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to allow God to help me approach every situation, that I'm going to believe the best in every situation. I'm going to look for possibilities in every situation. I'm not going to worry about the odds that are against me. I'm going to think about all the odds that are for me. Because all things work together for my good. Drop over with me in verse, uh, look with me in verse 37. He says, nay, in all these things, you are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look what he says. He says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Somebody say, I am more than a conqueror. In other words, it would have been one thing for Paul to write that you're just a conqueror. He's trying to elevate your thinking that you are much more than a conqueror. In other words, he said, listen, you don't just conquer. You more than conquer. You're not just getting through this life. You're going to live the abundant life. It's so much bigger, better, brighter than you can possibly think because in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. Now, what things would he be referring to? Well, let's look in verse 38. Paul says, then I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is found in Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, in conclusion, that all things are going to work together for your good because you love God and you're called according to his purpose, and he has made you more than a conqueror. Don't pay attention to all the things going on in your life. Don't pay attention to the negative things because God's made you more than a conqueror. You will more than conquer in every situation and every circumstance. Why? Because with God, nothing Nothing shall be impossible. Would you stand with me this morning? Come on, you receive that today? Come on, do you receive that today? Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. You receive that this morning? I want you to find three people around you right now and turn and tell them, with God, nothing will ever be impossible. Come on, find three people. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now you got to find one more. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
Listen, you ought to be what? You need to walk out of here feeling like slapping a bear. You need to walk out of here, you know what? I can take this, I can do this. Because God wouldn't give my pastor a messenger a word for me today if he wasn't wanting to do more impossible situations in my life. I, I know the thoughts there, man, I've heard that before. But listen, faith does not come to you by having heard it comes by hearing and hearing. Sometimes we have to hear it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's kind of like my wife. I say, I love you. And she's like, oh, that is so nice to hear. I'm like, girl, you know I love you. She goes, but it never takes away from you telling me over and over and over and over. I'm like, do you really need me to say it over and over? She says, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. I told her, I said, you know, the Bible says that me being the pastor of, of the church, that the scripture is a scripture. The Bible says God's put an angel of the house. So I'm an angel. She said, well, you're the angel of destiny. You're not the angel of our home. I said, listen, once an angel, always an angel. But you know what? Learn to speak to your spouse, to your children, your family, not just in this holiday time. You know, my mom calls me all the time. She says, you're my best preacher. And, you know, I'm like, mom, you're just saying that. He goes, no, 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 honey. You are the very, my most favorite preacher ever. Mom, do you mind me asking, how old are you? 72. Come up here, mom. Have y'all seen a prettier 72-year-old? Look at this. Got her Kleenex out. Mom, who's your favorite preacher? You are. I'm your favorite. Who preaches the best sermons always? You. Me. Thank you, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Amen. But, you know, Proud. before I thought, Mom, you don't got to say that. I'm just calling. I will call her and say, Mom, how was my message today? She only says good things. I said, no, Mom, I need serious feedback. No, honey, it was the best sermon you've ever preached. Now, she may, I'm believing she's telling the truth. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know what? She's always been in my corner. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Yeah, she could probably pick out, you know, all of the bad things I've done in life. But you know what? She's always building my faith because faith comes in any situation in your life by the more you hear it. Amen. Be one that builds faith of the doors of possibilities in other people's life because you're always telling them the good things, the positive things. Thank you. Love you, Mom. Heads bowed and eyes closed all over this room.